to the world famous city of Hong Kong and today's HGC import race. With over 7 million residents and a long and vibrant history, Hong Kong is the gateway to Asia. The Volvo Ocean Race has a 10 year history with China, stopping in Qingdao in 08 09, Sanya in the two previous editions, and this time in both Hong Kong and Guangzhou. Translated as Fragrant Harbour, Hong Kong supposedly takes its name from the incense markets that lined the shores in the 1800s. The race area is right in the centre of downtown between Hong Kong and Kowloon, with the Spectator Village on the site of the famous old airport at Kai Tak. Which team will enjoy the sweet smell of success today? Let's take a look at the highlights from leg four from Melbourne to Hong Kong. Clock ticking down, tensions picking up. Now the fleet split, uh, we are three boats going uh, offshore of the Australian coast and the other rest of the fleet is going inshore. Milestone for us in the fleet. We're going past the Solomon Islands. real doldrum white conditions. into Hong Kong here, yeah? so getting close. Just 30 miles from the finish and in second place, Vestas 11th Hour Racing were involved in a tragic incident, colliding with a non-racing vessel. The team retired from the leg to participate in the search and rescue, meaning Dongfeng race team would finish in second place, closing the gap to overall leader Matt Frey, who finished fourth. Before today's HGC Hong Kong import race, let's take a look back at the action from the series so far. Matt Frey coming in on port, not looking like a good start from Matt Frey at all. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, Festus, 11th hour racing. What a super start from them. The boat that has got the breeze is certainly Mafre. Is this a bad start for them or actually is this going quite nicely? A couple of boat lengths from the line. Pablo Arate helming the boat beautifully as they push the bow down. And there they go, take the win. The Sung Hoon Kai Scallywag looked great on start with two boats on port. Turpentine on plastic and Axo Novel both having to avoid. Here we go. 3, 2, 1, and that is the gun. Start looks all clear. Wow, how close is this? Amazing racing. Brunel continue to lead around the bottom mark under pressure though from the Spanish team, Matt Frank. Look at the puff and breeze here. And look at the speed of Matt Frank. Maybe they're going to get around them. Rob Greenhouse looking very closely. Look at that, just easing a little bit of main sheet out. Oh, Aaron 
can they get to them? Brunel now have the puff as well. Brunel, win! Amazing! Matt Frey in second. Don Fong race team in third. Three, two, one. And that's the gun. A beautiful start from D. Kafari and turn the tide on plastic. Well, it's Festus 11th Hour Racing leading around the first mark of the Cape Town in port race. It's going to be a duck from Festus 11th Hour Racing. A lead change. On the A3, please. Mark that. At the top, Dong Fong race team lead. And down towards the finish, the Dong Fong race team put on a masterclass of sailing here in Cape Town and take the win. After three races, Matt Frey on top of the leaderboard with 19 points. Dong Fong race team close behind with 18. Team Brunel on 13. Vestas 11th Hour Racing on 12. Team Axo Nobel with 11. Sung Hung Kai Scallywag on 6. Turn the tide on plastic with 5 points. Well, just a few minutes ago, we had the Sailors Parade and the Dockout Show. Great crowds and as you can imagine, extremely colourful scenes on the Kai Tak Peninsula, the site of the old airport. Anyone who's seen some of the videos, we're very happy they've moved the airport now. We get to enjoy this wonderful peninsula right in the middle of downtown Hong Kong between Kowloon and Hong Kong. Here we go with live pictures out on the water. And the weather brought to you by Vestas wind is easterly 8 to 15 knots it's extremely puffy and there is tide out on the race course as well but I think the shifting breeze and the puffy nature as the wind comes through the city and those skyscrapers more skyscrapers in Hong Kong than any other city in the world fourth densest city with over 7 million residents here is the race course that's where we are there the airport uh, just above and it looks like it's going to be a four lap race. Bill O'Hara has given us the word. As the boats tack up wind and they can go around a gate at the top and then a gate at the bottom until they arrive there at the finish with two minutes to go to the start. I'm joined in the commentary booth by a Team Brunel sailor, an Olympian, a three time world match racing champion and previously on SCA. Annie Lush, great to have you in the booth. Annie, what do you see out there? Yeah, it looks quite light right now and puffy, so um, it's going to be very tricky, I think, to know which side to start here. And, uh, yeah, four laps. A Keep right, it clean. Right, uh, it looks like a right-hand shift at the moment. Everyone on starboard. One boat there, Axo Nobel, look like they're going for a port tax start. But you were saying earlier uh, around the race course, there's better breeze, as it were, top of screen, and to the bottom of the screen, maybe better favourable wind shifts. Is that right, Annie? Yeah, that's right, Andy. I think it's going to be tricky here. You've probably got better breeze on the right, but as you come up the course, you get wind bends from the left coming around all these buildings, as you say. So, um, yeah, you've got to have your wits about you. There we go. One minute to go, and on starboard tack means you have right of way. So we've got five of the boats there on starboard, and they're just slowing down right now, a little early for the line. Yeah, there'll be someone on board right now calling distance to the line and um, obviously there's a bit of jostling here because you want to have a position on the line but you want to also have a little bit of a run up sort of space so you can have speed as you hit the line. Right, so speed uh, as the gun goes is crucial. Uh, you can't be over the line though. No, you can't be over the line. If you're over the line, there's a big penalty to pay. So. A real squeeze in at the windward end here. Looks like uh, that right-hand shift is making it very difficult for Di Kafari on Turn the Tide on Plastic. Matt Frey being squeezed out by their big rivals, Dong Fong Race Team. Dong Fong doing a great job of keeping out their main opposition. Are Dong Fong going to be able to squeeze in between the committee boat on board right now? There's the committee boat just in front of them with eight seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Gun and a super start from Scallywag and Dong Fong race team and Team Brunel. Just behind them, Matt Frey getting squeezed out as were Turn the Tide on Plastic. The HGC Hong Kong import race is go. Matt Frey forced to tack away. That's a dangerous position, that right hand side. And just tell us why that right hand shift means that it makes that so difficult. 
Yeah, so right now, Mapu have had to tack on, on to port, which means they're sailing the wrong shift and they might be going into better pressure, but as they come up the race course on starboard, when they come back, they're going to be going against the shift again. So it's almost a double loss here, potentially. So who are we giving the best start there to? I think that had to go to Scallywag, didn't it? I mean, they absolutely nailed the line there. Yeah, beautiful. They were absolutely going at full speed, like you were talking about earlier, as the gun went, and they weren't over the line. So between them and uh, your team, Brunel, they both got the best start. And let's go down on the water for an update from Nick Bice. Yeah, we've probably got the best breeze that I've seen in the last hour at the moment. And uh, with all the teams heading to the right-hand side, I don't think that's any coincidence, but uh, from what we saw earlier, any of the gusts coming in is uh, getting a left-hand shift. So this is going to be tricky. We've got a bit of tide running as well, which is running up the course. So from behind them going upwind. Um, so uh, we're in for a real treat here today, and it doesn't get much better than this downtown Hong Kong. There we go. The update from Nick Bice is Matt Frey tack onto starboard, and that means everybody else have to avoid them. These great pictures will just bring you some latest news from Vestas 11th Hour Racing. They're not on the water today for the HDC import race as the team coordinates repairs to their boat following the tragic collision. I'm going to bring you that in a moment. Protest flag on Axo Nobel. And they just got squeezed out there. And that was an incident between them and the Dongfong race team. We'll see what the umpires have to say about that. Plenty of action here. We'll just. Uh, bring you back that uh, Vestas 11th hour update in a moment as we follow the racing. Axo Nobel now in the bad air and Scallywag now going out towards the right hand side. Look like they've got a decent puff of breeze there. Difficult position for Axo Nobel as we wait for an umpire decision. Really bad air for Axo Nobel there but you just got to be patient in these situations. Green flag. So that means there's no penalty and Axo Nobel you know Unfortunately for them, they're just going to have to tack out as they have there. And you've got to put that behind you now and carry on. And it looks like the Dongfong race team are really trying to put the squeeze on Matt Frey. Uh, for those of you who uh, joined us, it is uh, uh, half points for this race and then again half points for tomorrow's round Hong Kong race. So the accumulated scores of this race and tomorrow's race go forward towards, uh, as it were, the one point for, uh, uh, for the, the points for uh, the race tomorrow. Ooh, very close as Matt Frey tack away. Dong Fong got extremely close to them. Dong Fong were in the advantage position and I think they just red flagged that. Pascal Bidegari, the uh, navigator. And look, you can see on Matt Frey, they were forced into a quick tack and they've, made, they've got a problem. Yeah, that was, Matt Frey got very close there. They were the giveaway boat. They were to windward, which means they're closer to the wind. And um, to me, you know, they left that tack very late and put themselves in a very tricky spot. Well, we're going to get an update from the umpires as soon as we can, but the, the tack was too far, was very fast, and that means difficult for the trimmers. Maybe a riding turn they got on that jib where the, uh, where the rope does tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, you would think, you know, attack is a very simple maneuver, but we are sailing these boats really short-handed and, um, they're, you know, they're really set up for offshore, so it is hard to do things as quickly as that on these boats. You've got dagger boards as well and you've got to move the keel, so there's a lot going on in that pack. Not many people on board. Yeah, it's all on. And, uh, we're just seeing pictures of Turn the Tide on Plastic who are putting up their A3, it looks like, uh, there, which is a furling downwind sail. So Nobel have now got a decent bit of breeze in the middle to the right-hand side of the race course. Sung Kai Scallywag tack onto starboard. They've got their A3 up already, but maybe Axo Nobel are just going to squeeze around the front of them. But it's snakes and ladders on this race course, puffs all over the place. Plenty of shifts as well. Yeah, it's tricky here, Andy, because it's a four-lap race, so it does come down to keeping the boat handling simple. And Axo Nobel don't have their, you know, their spinnaker up yet which is going to help them with speed, but it might cause them a loss. We might see that later when they actually have to hoist it. When you put that A3 up, uh, it, it, it sort of, uh, it, it slows the boat down because why? Uh, well, firstly, you've got the windage of the sail and that's huge. Um, it makes you lose leeway, so you slip sideways a lot. Um, and also affects the tension you have on your rig a little bit. So it's sort of deforming your main slightly. Okay, well, the Dongfong race team, bottom of screen, look like they're in good shape there, but Axo Nobel are way out to the top or the right-hand side of the race course. Nick Bice, let's get an update. Who do you see uh, coming out of this well? Looking good, Nick. Uh, well, um, the left 
definitely looked to go very well for Dong Fong there, and uh, <laughs> very unfortunate for the local scallywag. I thought Axa Nobel did pretty well up the middle, but it's definitely Dong Fong who's going to come out on top here around the first uh, windward mark. And there looks like a little bit of a puff just on Dong Fong right now, Nick. Do you see that on the water? Yeah, there's definitely, as the puffs come through here, it's a little left-hand breeze also. So that's only going to help Dong Fong as it gets a little closer to the first windward gate. And Matt Freya dipping Axo Nobel, but while we've still got you, Nick Bice, it looked to me like Dong Fong race team were really trying to put the squeeze right from the start on their closest opponents on Matt Freya. Did you see that? Yeah, the, the two red boats, they, they've started this uh, entire series very close. They're going to finish it extremely close. And I think Charles Cordelier had a little wry smile on his face as he uh, short, uh, made Matt Frey tack out of their position. OK, at the first windward mark of the HGC Hong Kong import race, it's the Dong Fong race team leading. In second place, it's Axo Nobel. The A3 up there on the Dong Fong race team, they seem to be okay. They're choosing that uh, left-hand mark as we look upwind. Just, here we go, on board as they bear away. Charles Quadrelier driving the boat. They unfurl the A3. And it's a jibe set. Really light, suddenly the breeze has just gone completely at the top of the leg. In second place, Axo Nobel. Close between Team Brunel and Matt Frey. Ooh, Team Brunel having to make a big altar of course. Matt Frey decided that they didn't have room inside. In third place, around the top mark, it's Matt Frey. Coming down towards the opposite mark. In fourth place, it's Team Brunel. Snakes and ladders all the way around this race course. It's the puffy, shifty conditions that Annie was talking about earlier. Team Brunel have decided to go for a jibe set as well. As your team took us through it, Annie. Yes, yeah, so you can see there's quite a bit going on in, in this manoeuvre. It's very light, so it's going to be hard to get going here. Um, uh, you've got to get both dagger boards up. You've got to get the keel centred. Obviously, you've got to get the, the spinnaker out. And we might be seeing teams drop the jib as well here, I think, because it's so light, you're going to have to drop the jib to get the, the spinnaker filling, even though you don't really want to because the course is short. It's four laps, so there's going to be a lot of grinding now. It sails up and down. Top of screen. And fifth and sixth place shared between Sung Hung Kai Scallywag and Turn the Tide on Plastic as they both come around the top mark. This is by no means over. There are four laps and with this kind of breeze, look at the top of the screen right now. Axo Nobel got that breeze on the right-hand side that you were talking about. Shift better on the left, but pressure better on the right. Dong Fong race team went around in the lead, but now Axo Nobel bringing it to the Dong Fong race team and actually giving them a love. Charles Quadrelier having to avoid as windward boat, you have to keep clear, right? Yeah, when we're boat here, Dong Fong needs to keep clear. And I think, you know, that all came from a really good dive there from Axel Nobel. I mean, they got that spinnaker in quickly and you've just seen them come at Dong Fong with pace. And Dong Fong's still trying to get their spinnaker in here. OK, well, we'll just watch pictures as I, uh, I'm just going to update you. Vestas 11th Hour Racing is not on the water today for the HTC import race or the around Hong Kong Island race tomorrow as the team coordinates repairs to their boat following the tragic collision with a non-racing vessel last week near the end of leg four. Following the collision, a search and rescue operation by the team eventually concluded with the team recovering one casualty from the water who was then airlifted to hospital but unfortunately didn't survive. From the entire Volvo Ocean Race family, our hearts go out to everyone involved in this tragic incident. On Thursday, the team announced it wouldn't be racing this weekend or next week for leg five when the fleet departs for Guangzhou, China. But we know the Vestas 11th hour racing team has been working incredibly hard behind the scenes to return the, to the race as soon as possible. And they'll provide more updates on their progress as soon as it becomes available. To that end, uh, on the Facebook live chat, we've got Vestas 11th hour racing here today. They've told us they'll be answering questions 
you post in the comments as best they can, given the ongoing investigations. We look forward to welcoming Charlie Enright, Mark Towle and their team back to racing as soon as possible. Please be respectful of their situation. Okay, and with that, back to the racing on board the Dongfong race team. Let's listen in. That's Mary Ryu, right? What's she saying there? The Mary Ryu is calling the pressure in there, calling in the puffs and into the bottom. Uh, it's funny hearing Maria. I've actually raced with her quite a lot, so I feel like I'm on board with her there. Right, so Nobel's slowing down a little bit there. It doesn't seem like they've got quite enough trim on that A3. Yeah, this is that tricky moment, Andy, here, where actually you just need to start furling quite soon. And although you're going to lose a little bit with getting this jib up early and getting the furl in, you know, long term, you might save getting around the mark. So they're going to be trying to hold the spinnakers out as long as they can to get down to the mark. But if you push it too late, you'll have a bad, bad furl. And then that means that you'll have a big sail flapping in front of you to try and get around the mark. Well, Axel Nobel did a good job of a late furl there, and they actually got an extra little bit of speed. And here we go, incident about to occur between the Dongfong race team and Matt Frey. And this again is about Dongfong race team making sure that Matt Frey do not get ahead of them. This is, this is either a port starboard or a water around at the mark. Were Dongfong within the three boat length circle? Pablo Arate seems to think no. Dongfong presumably think yes, and that Matt Frey did not have room to go around inside them. Clear red flag on the plate, green flag. Okay, so explain to us what happened there, Annie. It's, it might look a bit strange because you had a boat on port and a boat on starboard, but actually that's not the problem here. It's rule 18, which is about having room at the mark. And um, Dong Fong, they got into the zone first, which means they have all the rights at the mark. It doesn't matter which tackle jibe they're on there. So Matt Free has to sail around the outside of them. And actually watching our virtual eye here, we could see it also agreed with the umpire's calls there that Dong Fong did get in the zone and Matt Free didn't get in the zone. A beautifully executed technical mark rounding there for Dong Fong race team. As Annie said, they got into the zone, then they jibed and they forced Matt Frey to go around the outside, a very slow maneuver for Matt Frey. And that, uh, again, speaks to Dong Fong, trying to keep Matt Frey behind them. Remember, there's only one point difference uh, between them in their import race overall standings with Matt Frey on 19, Dong Fong race team on 18. So Dong Fong really want to uh, put the heat on the, on the Matt Frey in every way they can. On board, team Sultan Kai Scallywag. Let's listen in. That's David Witt calling for Jim Trim. So here, Andy, you can see there's a call for board down and the jib on, and also we need to get the main on and the traveler up. So there's so much to do, and you know, you've only got six grinders, you've got to work out how to split everyone up and which is the priority. And Libby Greenhouse there, not only grinding the main sheet in, but then jumping off the pedestal and then uh, 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 sorting out the main sheet around the winch. Coordinated ballet on board. Yeah, I think they're appreciating having a ninth person on board now and uh, seeing the advantage of having someone small who can run around and tidy up the mess. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Uh, possible incident here. Make it clear. The tide on plastic on starboard. Some of Kai Scallywag now on port. Now I think they're clear on that in front of them. Just okay. Let's go down onto the water and get an update uh, on the leaders from Nick Bice. Tell us what you see. Yeah, Dong Fong, Dong Fong Racing did a fantastic job um, rounding that bottom mark, and now they're probably in the most advantageous tide heading up here and in the most consistent breeze. What we're seeing where Scallywag and Turn the Tide on Plastic Car is at, is not much breeze at all in the bottom left of the course. So uh, the teams that are heading to the right are definitely uh, going to stretch their leads here. So a little more consistent breeze on the right-hand side and uh, uh, in the main channel, it, it, uh, towards the right, is there, there's, there's less tide against them. Is that right, Nick? 
So the tide is actually pushing them out, or push it, uh, is from behind them going upwind. So, uh, and they're just placing themselves nicely in the commercial channel in the deeper water just to take advantage of that. Yeah, so an outbound tide means both the breeze on the right and the tide on the right is proving better than the, uh, than the potential shift on that left-hand side. Header on Dongfeng. Header on Dongfeng. Or is that the head on boat soccer? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Between the boats. <laughs> um, but what they're saying is that essentially the breeze is going right for Dongfeng here, so they're sailing sort of further away from the mark. So a header is generally a bad thing upwind. You want it to be lifting with the tack you're on. You can see that right now. Explain what, explain what a header is right there. Yeah, so you can see Dongfeng's bow is down to the right, and Axe and Nobile, meanwhile, they're pointing higher. They're sailing up higher towards the wind, more to the left of the screen. It's just before the tack. Now we've got a port starboard situation because Dongfong race team now on starboard and Axo Nobel are going to have to avoid them. It's crucial to get a tack in. Oh, someone felt that maybe they didn't have to tack right there. Okay, so they've cleared, they've tacked uh, directly ahead. So now uh, it's Axo Nobel who have the right away position there and the. Chinese French team of Dongfong have to tack away to get out of the dirty air. Yes, correct. And I think that was actually a good, good tack, well placed there by Snowball. It's very hard to get that right, but they've managed to force Dongfong away again. Um, do you it's easy to you know, go a bit too far or, or not far enough there. Do you think they could have crossed? Uh, they had a sort of slight lift on port right when they started to tack. Yeah, they did. And I think we heard someone on board maybe saying that, but... Um, you know, it's only lap two here. And it's only the upwind of lap two, and there's, there's another two laps to go after this. So uh, to me, it's too early to be taking risks where you might get penalties. They're right up in the race here, and I think that's a wise choice. Keep it safe. They're in second. They're fighting for first. Stay in the fight. Excellent input, Annie. That's why we've got you here. Perfect. That's great to know. And uh, quite right. That is uh, not the time to be doing penalty turns for tacking too close or not crossing on a port starboard when you are at the front of the fleet. Uh, let's go down to Nick Bice again. Uh, Nick, Nick, uh, what say you? Oh, this is definitely snakes and ladders going on here. So Axe and Nobel have tacked back, heading towards the gate in a nice left-hand breeze. And uh, about five seconds earlier than that, Dong Fong were looking strong. So it's back and forth, back and forth. And as Annie says, you, you need to keep it clean and make sure it's only, well, we're about to approach the halfway mark in the race, but... Um, as I say, that Axe and Nobel look to be sneaking ahead and they'll bear away at this windward gate and unfurl the A3 and get in that favourable breeze again to oh. make their way towards the bottom. Oh, oh Axe and Nobel are going to want to cross, but it's going to be a tight one. Let's watch. At the top mark of the halfway stage of the HGC Hong Kong import race, it's neck and neck between Axe and Nobel and the Dongfong race team. Axo Nobel have it by a boat length. Great hoist. Axo Nobel lead. Dongfong race team in second, unfurling. Nice sailing from them. Annie, what's going on here? Light air. Yeah, really light air. You've got to just try and get that spinnaker out as fast as you can and the jib down. You can see it's still up here in Dong Fong and there's probably quite a lot of pressure to get that jib down. The second that the head of that sail drops, it really helps to fill the spinnaker and get it away from the boat. Axel now as well has done a good job there. Jib's down and, and they're off. Yeah, well, the Chinese team of Dong Fong race team have kept right in the hunt here. There'll be plenty of their fans here in Hong Kong, very happy about their performance. Team Brunel around in third. In fourth place, coming into the top mark, it's Matt Frey. As Nick said there, you know, snakes and ladders, Brunel have gained a lot there on the left-hand side. They've now moved up to third. You um, can only imagine that with some of that left shift at the top, and they've got ahead of Matt through. 
Okay, we'll go down to Nick Bice. Uh, Team Brunel did a great job of getting right back in it there. Uh, where was it, Nick? Yeah, wonderful job, and they got to round the mark in good pressure also. So they carried that left-hand shift all the way up. They've rounded quite nicely in the uh, A3, unfurled very nicely. So they've had their foot down for this, uh, the, definitely the last few minutes here. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens at the bottom here. At the moment, Axa Nobel and Dong Fong are in very good breeze heading towards the bottom. So uh, let's keep our eyes on this. Round the top mark in fifth place, it's Sung Hung Kai Scallywag. In sixth place, turn the tide on plastic. She and her team only a couple of boat lengths behind Sung Hung Kai Scallywag. Battle all the way around the race course from front to back. But Axo Nobel doing a very nice job in decent pressure. And the Chinese team of the Dong Fong race team following close behind. There's the corporate hospitality for Turn the Tide on Plastic, the Mipuri Foundation, and their hashtag Turn the Tide on Plastic has been an incredible movement that has grown and grown. Look at that backdrop of Hong Kong, amazing. The construction here is incredible. Beautiful place to be. Axo Nobel lead over Dongfong race team, over Team Brunel, and then it's Mac Frey. So the Chinese Dongfong race team are super happy to be keeping ahead of Mac Frey, their main rival in the import race series and the overall series. On board with them, let's listen in. Pressure coming down here, that'll make Charles Montrelier happy. And they're groaning on board. Just talk us, talk, us, talk to us about that. <laughs> that's a good sound, Andy. That means you're easing a sheet, which normally means there's more wind in the sail. So that's a good sign. You pulled the pressure, and then you can hear Caroline easing the spinnaker for that breeze. There you go, good sign when you can hear the, and it's the sound of the rope uh, around the winch. Axo Nobel, looking like they're set, trying to sell quite uh, deep down to this bottom mark. Yeah, I can tell you the sound of that easing isn't so nice when you're trying to sleep below. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's incessant, presumably. <laughs> <laughs> Trimming the sails in and out is all about the skill of trimmers. And uh, there we go, that's Brad, Brad Ferrand on the bow. Yes, that's a very important job he's doing there. He's got to get that spinnaker sheet so it's clear of the furling unit, which is what he was flicking it over there, so that they can jibe. And uh, if you don't do that, you can end up with a, a big mess. So uh, good foresight, foresight by him there to go and get that clear nice and early so they can go either way here. Excellent downwind leg from Axo Nobel around the lured mark at the end of leg four. Axo Nobel lead. Good job. Good way to go. Go, go, go. Go. Look at that on the winch grinders. That's Martin Grail and Chris Nicholson sharing the duties of getting the main sheet in. In second place, round the bottom mark, Dong Fong race team, keeping their Chinese fans very happy. Yeah, prepare to tack. I don't want to see the traveler on the main wing. Oh, Axo Nobel came into that light left-hand side. Doesn't no, no. a great place to be right there, Annie. No, but Dong Fong have got a sail underneath a couple of boats here as well, so it might not be all over for them yet. OK, down to Nick Bice. It looks like there's a split between the leaders, Axo Nobel and Dong Fong race team. Uh, which side do you want to be? Well, I like what Dong Fong have done and stayed in that consistent pressure. We haven't seen the bottom left of the course pay at all. So if Axa Nobel can just sneak out and pick up a little lefty, that could put them back in the driving position. But Dong Fong do look strong out there to the right. And if they can get above the, the ship, the Oriental Dragon down here, I think they'll be looking pretty nice. 
that ship, the Oriental Dragon. What a perfectly named boat for this HGC Hong Kong import race just on the right-hand side of the race course there. And we've got a battle here between Team Brunel and Matt Frey as they also split around the gates at the bottom mark. Matt Frey sort of being forced to take that lighter left-hand position. And it looks like that right-hand mark top of screen is got better breeze and is sort of closer upwind, is it, Annie? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you saw there, uh, Mapfrey did manage to keep their spinnaker for quite a long time taking that mark. So there's a bit of a gain there that they were going faster towards it for a while. Um, but yeah, as Nick says, that right hand side is, is looking strong. I like where Brunel's going there. A yeah, bit of an extra tide going out of Hong Kong Harbour. We're actually in uh, Victoria Base or Kowloon Bay. And uh, just above to the right is uh, um, Victoria Hills. over halfway through the race here now and Sung Hong Kai Scallywag in fifth place taking the right hand side turn the tide on plastic close on their heels in sixth these are one of the lighter moments you have to try and keep the boat speed up here and there is an incredible difference in boat speed when the when, it, when the boat slows down and sort of goes flat yeah, it's a big difference, and you can see there on, on Scallywag, maybe any dinghy sailors watching this would think, well, why wouldn't you drive with the spinnaker there and keep the speed? You know, they had to fell very early, but there really isn't enough time on these boats, so they had to get rid of the spinnaker and then jive with just the jib, which is slow. So they've taken a big loss there to make sure they get that mark and get that right-hand side, and we'll see if that pays out for them. But from what we're seeing, I think it will. It's worth that loss. Well, on the... On the tracker, it looks absolutely neck and neck between Axo Nobel and Dongfong Race Team. And for our eyes on the water, Nick Bice, who's uh, looking the better out of these two right now? Oh, Just in the, in the last minute or so, Axo Nobel has picked up a very nice left-hand shift. And uh, they will be definitely a few boat lengths ahead of Dongfong in this situation. And as that left-hand breeze does come down, I'm going to be interested to see what happens to Frey, who are a long way down the uh, on the on the port, but a little left soon, and uh, the, which may take them all the way up to the. Well, just as we came down to Nick Bice there, uh, we were unsure of which boat was going to do better, and that gives you an idea of. Uh, the huge gains and losses that are experienced out for this HGC import race. And the gain there was to Axo Nobel big time. What is that? Uh, they must have gained 10 or 15 boat lengths with only a very small amount of separation there. Yeah, that looks about 10 lengths. But, you know, this means that now Dong Fong are going to take the left. So uh, we'll, see what, we'll see what happens if they get any left shift now. Lovely pictures from the helicopter there, looking down the rig, and that is what drives the boat forwards. And he just talked to us about the shape of the sails and how important trimming the sails are as the boat goes through the tack. It's good to think of the sails a bit like an airplane wing with the, the wind flowing over them. And what we're just looking at there now with the helicopter, we call it the slot, which is the gap between the big main sail at the back there and the jib at the front. And it's really important to, to get that slot right. That's what's really driving the boat forward. So you need to make sure that the jib trimmers and the mainsail trimmers are working together so that sort of matches. And when, the, when they match, it means that you get the perfect shape for the ideal amount of lift and not too much drag. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the lighter the wind is, generally you need to make the sail deeper to give you more power, which is more draggy but it will give you more power, and it's always a trade-off between power and then getting them flatter, so it's a better aerodynamic shape and getting more twist. So it's always a bit of a trade-off, and as the wind changes here, the trimmers are gonna have to adjust not only the sails, but also the rig to try and get that shape right. Here we go, Axo Nobel coming into the top mark have eked out an invaluable lead of around 10 or 12 boat lengths. Just behind them, Dongfong race team, but Team Brunel having a little sniff at second place, Annie. Yeah, I'm uh, watching this with excitement on the screen here, Andy. Um, they seem to have done well on the right-hand side there. They actually gained, I think, the first part of the race course on the left of Dongfong. We saw them only a few lengths behind, and 
it, they look to have gained here. They've got to do attack, so let's see how they come out of the attack. OK, in top spot, it's Axo Nobel, jibe setting around the windward mark with a 12-boat length lead. Great sailing from this team. Ooh, it's close between them, Team Brunel and Dong Fong. They're going to have to thread the needle here between them. Nikolai Sersted is driving. Done a lovely job of that, an accomplished match racer and their import helmsman. Now, incident here. Team Brunel on starboard, Dong Fong on port. Fong are going to have to tack. It's like a close tack. OK, they're clear. Yes, stand by. Stand by, set, OK? Jive set on Dong Fong, and Brunel have really gone, come right back into it here, Annie. Yeah, they've done, they've done really well at the top of the course. Um, tricky maneuver here, though. Obviously, they've had to tack around the mark. Now they've got to deploy. Dong Fong have got good speed straight in there, so let's actually call these two even at the top here now. Pretty much rounding at the same time. I hope we've got the right side. In second place, only just, the Dongfong race team. In third place, around the top mark, Team Brunel on the charge and on the hunt for the Chinese team. Very light at the top, and Matt Frey are really struggling to get around this top mark here. Tom Fong will really want to get keep a lead ahead of Brunel so that they can put points on Matt Frey. All the other import races that we've seen, when we've seen Matt Frey at the back, they've always managed to claw back into this race. Maybe not this time. There's still quite a bit of race left in this, but as you say, it is getting lighter and that will make it harder. You start to see the distances open up and that was painful for Matt Free there. They, were, they weren't on the ley line. They got headed towards that Wimber mark and they've had to tack again, which is slow. Pablo Arate at the helm. He helms all the import races and often the import race helms, helms person is different from the skipper. We can see that here with Pablo Arate, and I believe on Team Brunel today as well. And they haven't had a shot yet from the helicopter, but tell us. Yeah, well, there's a bit, a bit of a change on board today, and Pete Burling's actually driving now, not Bauer Becking. Bauer's doing tactics. It was sort of always the plan um, to get Pete driving, but now he's had enough time on board to you know, do the manoeuvres in this Volvo 65. And uh, yeah, so his debut at steering today. Doesn't really seem to be going too badly for the America's Cup winner and gold medalist. Um, uh, 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 not a bad sailor, that one, and he's going for the triple crown. But while we talk, we'll talk about that later, and uh, the fact that Pete Burling is on the handlebars, we're looking at Sung Hung Kai Scallywag, and the furl on their A3 uh, looks far from ideal. Yeah, so as we were talking about Andy, it's all sort of risk and reward, and they didn't have such a good furl at the bottom mark, so they had essentially a big bag flapping around all of that upwind. It wasn't too windy, so the drag won't be so bad, but it definitely hasn't helped them upwind there. Okay, well, it just, fortunately, it seems to have unfurled without too much drama there. And look at this up at the top of screen. Team X and Nobel are uh, clearly leading, but... Chinese team of the Dongfong race team are still defending against Team Brunel. Dongfong means east wind or wind from the east, so they're hoping for a little bit of that east wind here in Hong Kong to keep them ahead of Team Brunel and to keep those points in between them and Matt Frey. Yeah, three or four boat lengths ahead there for the Dongfong race team over Team Brunel. And Axo Nobel sailing beautifully. Nikolai Sestet doing a great job at the front of the fleet driving this boat. Dong Fong look like they've jived in a really nice little puff there and have come down to Team Brunel as well. Yeah, I've got to admit, I was hoping they wouldn't have such a good jive there, but that was a, a great jive on Dong Fong. And, um, you know, they've now put Brunel in quite a tough spot. It's hard to gain in that position. Good racing, though, from Team Brunel. They, they, won't, be, uh, they won't be unhappy with this, particularly with new helmsman on the wheel and they've got uh, very CEO heavy at the back of the boat they've got the CEO from 
uh, from Brunel and the CEO from HGC, the sponsor of today's import race. So they'll be very happy to be right in the hunt. Because we have the new CEO of Brunel on board today and um, also a competition winner from Singapore uh, who was nominated by his fellow employees. So he's very excited to be here in Hong Kong getting the race on board. Cool. All right, let's have a look at Axel okay. Nobel. They look like they've got the smoothest of furls. They've eased the sail out. Now that A3 getting filled up. At the final Lured Mark gate before the last upwind and the last lap, Axo Nobel leading with a very handy lead. At the bottom mark here, it's Axo Nobel ahead with a very handy lead. Got decent breeze there as well. They jived into a nice puff. Yeah, that looks like a nice rounding there. Looks looks clean and as you say, really good pace out of the mark. Okay. Right up. Coming in second, it's Dongfong race team. We'll go down on the water to Nick Bice. Give us an update, Nick. Oh, I, I tell you what, you wouldn't want to be a tactician down here today. It's all over the joint. We ha went, have gone from not much wind five minutes ago to beautiful breeze now, which Axon Nobel and Dong Fong are both in, and they'll sail that right up to the top of the course. But it, we've said it before, and we'll say it again, it's snakes and ladders, snakes and ladders. But Axon Nobel seem to have stretched enough that hope they could probably hold on to this all the way to the finish. Team Brunel jibing around the bottom mark in third place. Very nice sailing with Pete Burling, the new man on the wheel. That's good. Go, just heading up around the bottom mark and looks like uh, plenty of puff and a bit of a left-hand shift perhaps as well. Yeah, it's interesting there, Andy, no one's opted to take the other mark. You know, there is a gate which gives you sort of a tactical option to try and do something different, which you might do here given that it's getting towards the end of the race. But they're, they're obviously all seeing something on that right-hand side and they don't want to give it up, so they're happy to follow each other and, and try and, you know, make the race happen somewhere else up the course. Well, any of your chat beforehand, we'll just, I'll just come back to that thought as we watch Matt Frey coming downwind and unusually haven't managed to claw their way back into the top two spots because they finished first, second and second in the last three import races in Alicante, Lisbon and Cape Town. They are far from that today. Fourth place around the Lord Mark, it's Matt Frank. Sophie Cizek, bottom of the screen. Giving it heaps on that grinder. Okay, Matt Frey go for that left hand mark. The one none of the other teams went for, so they're rolling the dice a bit, trying to find something. Probably a good decision for them. You know, they're, they're in fourth. They've got to try and they're a bit of a distance between the top three, so they've got to try something here. And uh, as you say, they're used to being further forward, so rolling the dice and seeing if they can make something happen on that left-hand side. David Witt on Sung Hung Kai Scallywag coming round in fifth place and on the hunt for Matt Frey. Well, not ideal at the front there. It's still got a bit of flappy clue. Show me that because that's the Sung Hung Kai building, perhaps. I'm sure there's a reason why the helicopter's giving us a good uh, view of that. In fact, look, it's the same logo that's on the set. Who would have thought of this? People thinking very cleverly about that. Nick Bice, what say you? Yeah, we've uh, seen a little bit of the follow the leader for the top three, and as the breeze has just dropped, it's gone a little bit further right. So Dong Fong are having a little dig across here to the uh, to the left-hand side to maybe try and pick something up against Saxon Nobel. Um, so it'll be interesting to see them come back together. Dong Fong are looking quite nice there. Oh, yeah, um, great puff on board the Chinese boat. As they're keeping their A3 up again, they're not uh, pulling these up and down. It's just too, it takes too much time. And uh, they slack it off so that the rig uh, breathes properly, right, Annie? Yeah, you need to make sure you ease, ease the tack off so that you don't end up with too much tension on the front there. Uh, because that then reduces the tension that you have on the jib, the, sort of the jib 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that means that you can't get enough runner on, which means you can't get enough four stay tension, and, and then the jib will look like a big bag. There you go. For all of those of you technically minded in sailing, that's a little uh, insight into how you trim a sail that's up but not drawing, uh, and how it's important to keep the four stay tension on the jib. Kong Fong tacking onto port now, coming back towards the right hand side on this final upwind leg before a downwind towards the finish. And let's listen in. Jules Sorter there, just trimming the lured runner. Always a favourite position for Jules. Yeah, that's just confirming how many laps they've done. And it might sound stupid, but it's so easy to get lost on this race course. Four laps is a lot when you've got your head down grinding all the time. But good to have someone confirming that, even if he's just trimming the lured runner. <laughs> Martin Grail there on the on the on the lured grinder, gold medal winner. Great sailor, right? Yeah, fantastic sailor. Got to sail a little bit with Martin this year. Had a and great to have her in the race. What particular skills does she bring to the team? I think she's a very natural sailor. Obviously, tactically very good, and um, the main thing is speed. You win these races by being fast, and she's definitely shown that pace in, in all the different boats now. Yeah, very good. Here we can see Axel Nobel over Dong Fong, race team over Team Brunel. So when the puff hits, the boat just leans over a little bit. What do you do when the puff hits there? Yeah, when, initially when the puff hits, you might just use some of that pressure and take it up towards the wind a little bit, so you're sailing a little bit higher towards the mark. But if you get too much and you want to keep speed, then you're going to have to ease something. There you go, Brent. Copy that! Axel Nobel leading around the final windward mark with a 15 boat length lead and great sailing. Keep coming. Keep coming. And the deploy of the A3, no problem there at all, and a nice bit of puff. I'll be very happy about getting away from that windward mark cleanly, right? Yeah, I was a bit nervous for their spinnaker there. I mean, it looked okay, but it was, it was flapping on the way in, and it had come slightly unfurled, and there's always a danger then that it can get in a bit of a knot, but there was a clean deploy, and, and they're off. In second place, making most of the East Wind Dongfong race team. There you go, one of the guests uh, enjoying himself enormously at the back and encouraging all their Chinese fans here in Hong Kong. And there are thousands of them enjoying this great team who are really challenging for the Volvo Ocean Race overall win and import race series win as well. Look at that, Marie Ryu. She's uh, back and forth along that boat. At the back, calling the breeze at the front, pulling the jib down. Is there nothing she can't do? Yeah, you're right, Andy. She's very diverse. <laughs> Um, sailor, but it's also the nature of these boats. You know, perhaps if you were sailing this boat normally on an import course, you'd have 15 people and everyone would have very specific jobs. But with these boats, in the way that we're set up, you just have to be very flexible and you'll see people going backwards and forwards. And you've really just got to be, you know, be able to do everything. You've got to do the bow, the back, the drive, and offshore even more. Yeah, right. And when you go offshore, you only have four people on watch at each time at the most. So, yeah. Uh, to be able to do everything. In third place, around the top mark, with their new helmsman, Peter Burling, a very good show of form, Team Brunel. It's quite a tight incident occurring here. Uh, Matt Frey on starboard, so Brunel just keeping clear of them as they come in towards the top mark. Matt Frey getting a bit of dirty air. You can hear everyone now starting to sound quite about out of breath and uh, you know quite a lot of shouting as people are trying to, to grind and deploy and you really need that towards the end of these races. Everyone will be tired now and uh, even even the odd um, guest on the back giving you a little shout is, is sometimes appreciated. <laughs> Keeps you going. Sail faster. 
Rob Greenhouse easing the main sheet on Matt Frey. Matt Frey go round in fourth. Okay, we go back to the leaders now. Axo Nobel sailing very nicely. This will be by far their best result in the Impul Race Series. Having finished uh, seventh. Fourth and third. No, third in Cape Town. Yeah. Seventh, fourth, and third. So this will be looks like a win for them as they come down the final leg. There's the Dongfong race team. And uh, Jack Butel there, you can see in the middle of the boat. He is very happy. He got engaged today, so congratulations to Jack. OK, let's go down to the water, get the last quick word from Nick Bice. Yeah, Axe and Nobel have done a fantastic job here. Sailed very cleanly, very safely, and uh, they're probably less than a minute away from crossing this line in this import race in first position. Thanks, Bicey. Great to have him updating us. Nick Bice in charge of, well, almost everything here at the Volvo Ocean Race. Certainly the boats, the sails, a lot of the technical stuff. And he gets these boats out on the water and fixes them all amazingly. Does a great job of it. Thanks, Nick, for giving us your insight. So Nobel jiving onto port for the final run in. About three boat lengths to go to the finish for an excellent win, beautifully sailed, HGC import race, taking the win, hey, Axo hey, Nobel. Hey, good job, guys. Hold your horses. There we go, very well done. Looks like Brian Carlin making a special guest appearance on Axo Nobel, just to give him a bit of luck. He's in charge of all the onboard reporters for the Volvo Ocean Race and has been an onboard reporter for the last edition of the race and now. Coming into the finish with about five boat lengths to go. Keeping their Chinese fans very happy. Mary Ryu, Daryl Wislang, Charles Cordrelli on the wheel, bearing away Dongfong race team take a well-earned and well-sailed second place. I think they should be happy with that, Andy. I mean, they might feel a little bit disgruntled because they have been in the lead, but it's very solid second place there and, you know, very tricky race course. Well, and I wanted to come back to you when we saw that incident between Axa Nobel and Dong Fong race team when uh, they could have just crossed them and that was our kind of crucial moment there and you said don't cross go conservative at this early stage see how it's played out maybe they were listening uh, <laughs> I think yeah it's four laps it's, it's a long race um, and for me Axe Nobel did such a good job on that I think the top of the the, the third win with Mark Rounding when they did just sailed really fast, really clean. They had a great set, got away, and I think that was a defining moment. They got that space on the rest of the fleet, and then they just kept going from there. It would have been really easy to get sucked back into the fleet in this light winds, and you know they had such a good rounding that they were they were off. And once you get that space in between, you're not getting forced. Uh, as we look at the pictures here, Peter Burling, his first import race, helming Team Brunel, does a beautiful job, as you'd all expect from the gold medal winner and the America's Cup winner. Team Brunel take third in the HGC Hong Kong import race today. Brilliant sailing. And it looks like the boss of the new CEO of Team Brunel taking the wheel and just letting go of the wheel enough to shake Bauer Becking's hand and be very happy. He's actually a sailor himself, the CEO and uh, it's very happy to be here in Hong Kong. That's Simeon Team Pond just giving Brian Carlin, the onboard reporter, a little interview there. And hopefully we'll be able to get down to some of those for our own interviews as we are with Matt Frey, 
don't look quite as chipper as they have in times past, Danny. Is that fair to say? <laughs> yeah, I think I think you'd be right there, Andy. They look a little bit head slow. Um, I mean, it's, it's only half a point. There's there's a race tomorrow as well, so you've got to keep that in mind. And you know, it's uh, they're middle of the fleet. It, it's okay. But as you say, they're used to being further forwards. And I think the important thing now is how this mood affects you going forward. They didn't have a fantastic last leg. This race hasn't been so good. You know, could this be a turning point in? in their race you never know and uh, it's all about how you move from this one into the next one yeah we've seen that happen in previous volvo ocean races where the dominant team starts to wobble in the middle of the race and it's sort of, uh, you have to you have to keep strong there we go there's the boss of sung hun kai driving the scallywag boat down towards the finish for a fifth place Scallywag still basking in the glory of their come from behind win, the leg four from Melbourne into their home port of Hong Kong. That's Mr. Lee, and he will be very happy as Sung Hung Kai Scallywag finished fifth. It really was an incredible leg win for Sung Hung Kai Scallywag, and Libby Greenhouge was the navigator and. Uh, did a great job. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, I'm with, I'm with Team Brunel, but I was very excited for Scallywag, and I actually had an email from, from Libby. I, I wasn't on board this last leg. I'd been injured, and um, so I actually got to speak to Libby a bit when she was in the middle of helping them to secure that, that win, and um, I'm a big fan of hers, obviously, having sailed around the world with her previously. Really pleased to see her on board, and then, you know, that she could help them as well. So she's still on board, and uh, I think they're... Yeah, Annemiek and her are doing a fantastic job with that team. So she was your navigator on SCA? She was our navigator on SCA, and you know that was a big ask for Libby at the time. She's a fantastic meteorologist, but that was really her first time navigating, um, and she did, she did a great job. She She's known to take calculated risks, and um, you know we did that a few times in our race and, and ended up leading out of them, and uh, great to see her on board with Scallywag and having the freedom to be able to do that again, and it paid off. Yeah, and now punching hard also with the Magenta project. Uh, just tell us about that. Yeah, so a number of us from Team SCA formed the Magenta project after the last race to, to really help advance women in, in sailing, and especially at the top level. And uh, I think we've got to sail with all the girls that are in this race before this race even happened. So, um, uh, and we've got loads of new young girls coming through as well. So we've got lots of different projects trying to get girls into big boats like these and help them make the jump from sort of amateur sailing into professional sailing. And a lot of work with uh, sort of corporate uh, businesses to uh, give them an insight into women's leadership under pressure and that sort of thing. Yeah, as always, of course, the corporate side is needed. But I mean, there's a lot we can learn from from businesses as well. It's you know, it's a hot topic at the moment in business and and. Uh, We've got a lot of women helping us from big businesses to how they're transferring up into the sort of top positions. Excellent, well, well done. And uh, the, the rule change for the Volvo Ocean Race, ensuring that there are women on every boat has been a real boon to both fans, supporters, and the race and the boats and getting women experiencing sailing these boats in all conditions, and particularly the Southern Ocean. And, pressure it's a brilliant thing as we watch another team pioneering that uh, message turn the tide on plastic Di Kafari female skipper and they've got 50 50 team with half men half women Brian Thompson there at the back with Henry Bombi uh, grinding while Dee drives and Annalisa Murphy doing a bit of calling tactics there as well she's the Irish laser sailor yeah, I mean, brilliant team here, 50-50, but also such diverse backgrounds. Um, Annalise Murphy, fantastic Olympian. Also, Francesca Clapfish from Italy, also bringing that Olympic experience. We've got some of the guys have come in from the Youth America's Cup and offshore sailors, so and offshore solo sailors as well. So a real mix of talent, and I think they're really finding their feet in this race now. And they might be slightly heads down now. It's not a win in this race, but... I think, as we saw with Team SCA last race, it's a long race. Keep going, keep working, and, you know, in the end, you can take a win. OK, there we go. Di Kafari and Turn the Tide on Plastic take sixth with that important message to Turn the Tide on Plastic, which is going viral, that's for sure. Change happening all around the world. But in the meantime, we have got an interview. We're going to go down to the skipper of the winning boat, 
Simeon Teampont. Simeon, how do you feel? Yeah, pretty good, Andy. We had a fantastic race and uh, yeah, pretty exciting. It was a great race. I mean, you sailed uh, beautifully. There were a couple of crucial moments. You had a port starboard with Dong Fong and there was a moment you could have crossed them, but you took the conservative route and uh, extended from there. To just talk us through it. Yeah, no, I mean, we uh, we sort of uh, had to plan to sail our own way. It's tricky enough here, you know, with uh, with the tides and the wind shifts. And uh, yeah, there was a bit of interaction, especially at the start. But um, yeah, we tried to protest, but at some point you just uh, yeah, we have to get on with it. And I, I, the compliments to the to the guys, you know, they did an unbelievable race. Everyone kept uh, going on sailing with uh, with the boat, and the guys in the back uh, played the tactics well. And must be a great confidence booster for for the whole team. Uh, by far your best result now in the import race. Uh, everyone uh, heads up on the boat and ready to uh, rage for the next few weeks. And uh, win, 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 I guess, is on the agenda for Axo Nobel, Simeon. <laughs> Absolutely. Win, win, win was in our minds all the time. And, uh, and we have the confidence with each other. And uh, But it's good when, uh, when you work so hard. And I mean... Again, you know, the guys have been working so unbelievable hard on the boat, but also off the boat. We have a perfect boat from the shore team. And yeah, and then it's good when things come together and uh, very rewarding. And this win is uh, for uh, for all the guys, uh, yeah, all the guys' effort. And uh, Nikolai Sestad driving the boat, he uh, looked like he was very cool and calm, smooth as anything today. Absolutely. It's our uh, Danish Viking. And... Uh, He's, uh, he used to be a talent, but I think uh, he's making a name for himself in this race. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he's one of the best out there. And, uh, and for me, an unbelievable luck that uh, I have him on the helm. And he did a great job today. And, uh, and Jules and, and Chris did a great job on the tactics. And, uh, yeah, and, 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 and the rest of the boat, uh, yeah, we, we did a great job sailing the boat uh, to the best potential. And everything came together today. So... Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's great sailing. Well done, Simeon. Congratulations. Thank you, Andy. See you on shore. Great. OK, well, a happy Simeon Team Pont and a happy Team Axo Nobel. Let's take a look at the scores from that race. Uh, Team Axo Nobel with Simeon Team Pont as the skipper. Second place, Dong Fong Race Team, the Chinese team, skipper by Charles Cordrelier. In third, Team Brunel, the new helmsman for the import races. Uh, and in fourth, Matt Frey, Chevy Fernandez. In fifth, Team Sung Hun Kai, Scallywag. And in sixth, Turn the Tide on Plastic. Well, it was all on for that race. It was plenty of tide. There was breeze all over the show. Let's have a look at some of the stats and see how this race played out from a techie point of view. Distance sailed uh, very uh, well, look at the tax and jibes. Very few on Axo Nobel, and that will help them enormously, as with Brunel. Uh, average speed for the top two boats Axo Nobel, Dongfong Race Team, both very fast, as was Sung Hung Kai Scallywag. And VMG, that really tells the tale, is velocity made good. Uh, that shows all the way first down to sixth, and that's how close you, how, how short distance with, uh, with speed final. Uh, comments Annie about the race and that stat tells it all right yeah you can see the stats there I mean speed always helps surprising to see how many maneuvers Dong from did and how you know they how well they managed to keep up there so uh, they've got to be happy with how they're maneuvering um, but fantastic race back to Nobel they just as Simeon said they sailed their own race they stayed clean even though they had that really tricky situation off the start line where they had loads of dirty wind it's really easy to get flustered then and sort of think the race is over, but they just kept sailing clean and, um, and sailed out. And obviously, have to say for Brunel, I think they did a great job to just keep sailing clean, taking what they could and, and put themselves in third. You know, they weren't in that position the whole race. Yeah, very good. Well done. Thank you very much, Annie Lush, for your insight today in the booth. And uh, tomorrow, at, uh, we've got the round Hong Kong Island for the other half of the points for this import race series here in Hong Kong and that is going to be quite a show. Tune in tomorrow, 11.30 local time.
11.30 a.m. local time tomorrow, the Hong Kong round the island race. That'll be a great one. Plenty of action, emotion, and drama here in the Volvo Ocean race. And Hong Kong is quite the city to enjoy it, as we saw Sung Hung Kai Scallywag had a lot of it in the last leg. But join us here tomorrow for Super Racing and the Volvo Ocean race. Never a dull moment. Thank you all very much for joining us. Thank you to Annie Lush from me, Andy Green. We'll see you tomorrow.